It's Tuesday, so we're ripping through the trending players tab on Sleeper as we do every Tuesday for the waiver wire to let y'all know who's fool's gold, who is actual gold. The studio downstairs is bumping right now. We got a music studio underneath our office, and they are ripping at all times. I'm shaking. So if you see me at any point throughout this video, just know it's coming from a place of love. Do not worry about me. I'm just I'm vibing. I'm vibing. All right. So sit back, tuck your shirts in. Enjoy the film. All right, so by the time y'all see this video, our waiver wire rankings are live on the website for Big Dog members. BDGE.co will get you access to them along with our weekly rankings, which will be live way prior to the Thanksgiving Day games. We'll actually be going live at noon today. Get you access to our private Q and assault every Saturday on YouTube. So head over there, BDGE.co. But we will be yapping for free, of course, every day on YouTube. Let's we'll start with Isaiah Likely. So, obviously, Mark Andrews is done for probably the fantasy season. They say he might actually return towards the end of the year, but I doubt it will be before the uh, fantasy playoffs wrap up. So, Isaiah Likely is kind of polarizing right now because he was so good last year when Mark Andrews went down. And then this year, he's had, you know, this previous week, which was like a half, and then all of week one to really do something and cement himself as a playmaker. And I think he's accumulated like one catch for four yards. So now we're like, nah, we're so far off him. I think we have this 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 problem in fantasy where like obviously recency bias is a huge problem. We we cannot look at things objectively, right? So when I take a step back, I say Mark Andrews is out. We have Isaiah Likely. We can look at last year. We can look at this year. Why don't we just look at the situation? We have Lamar Jackson throwing to his tight ends at an extremely high rate. This is an offense that is scoring at a very high rate, I would like the starting tight end in this offense. So I think we're going to overthink Isaiah Likely, and I think he's going to be a top 12 tight end for the rest of the season as long as Mark Andrews is out. So if you're in a tight end premium league, yes, you should be targeting Isaiah Likely, head over heels, falling in love with this man because he will be a staple of your lineup going forward. There's some QBs we could talk about off the rip. You know, in that same game, Joe Burrow went down. He's out for the season. Jake Browning filled in. Jake Browning had 40 rushing yards in this one, okay? So maybe he, he can move a little bit, right? And I also think another like objective view is Jake Browning might not be that good, but he also came in middle midway through the game. He's playing at Baltimore, a, a ridiculously good defense. He will eventually have T. Higgins back. He'll have a great supporting cast. Um, so I think Jake Browning should probably get a little bit more respect in the super flex leagues than he's probably getting right now in them streets. All right. One quarterback leagues. Yeah. Just let him fly by. But Pittsburgh, Jacksonville, Indy, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, KC. KC is a very good defense. Jacksonville's good. Uh, and on the road, that's really, really tough. But Jake Browning needs to be owned in super flex leagues. Just just thinking of the situation surrounding uh, what's going on in Cincinnati right now. But Chase, Higgins, you know, Tyler Boyd, they've got a good group there. And Jake Browning can move a little bit. So Jake Browning needs to be targeted as well. The obvious top pickup of the week is Zach Charbonnet at the running back position. He's super highly owned. This is the guy that tops the he's not available in my league type beat list but if he is he's who you spend all your fab on this week okay because we have kenneth walker going down with an oblique strain they play on thanksgiving they play thursday so he's not going to be available for this game we don't know how many games that kenneth walker will be sidelined for it could be anywhere from one game up to i don't know three four four weeks right and at that point you might be into the fantasy playoffs you might be starting Zach Charbonnet in your starting running back slot, right? And that is super fucking valuable at this time of the year. This is why you held him all year. We saw Kenneth Walker go down, and the important part of his stat line last week, 85% of the snaps, six targets, six catches, all right? He is a very well-rounded running back. He might not have the elite breakaway speed that Kenneth Walker does. He might not be as good on the ground. He's a grinder for sure. He'll get the goal line carries, but he's also very, very, very good at catching passes and just contributing in the passing game. The schedule, I, th I think this, listen, the schedule is really tough. It's San Fran, Dallas, San Fran, Philly, Tennessee, Pittsburgh, not rollover defenses either. That's really tough down the stretch. I kind of feel like it's going to be overblown just given the fact that if Kenneth Walker is out, Zach Charbonnet is going to get as much work as he can humanly fucking possibly handle. All right. So almost similar to like, uh, think of like Rashad White, where you just don't have another option, even if he's going to be inefficient on the ground, even if it's a tough defense, probably going to catch like four or five passes a game, probably going to score at least every other game and give you big boom fantasy games. 
along the way, regardless of the matchup. So Zach Charbonnet, I, I wouldn't like over emphasize the schedule coming up if Kenneth Walker is gone. But the upside of not having Kenneth Walker and having Zach Charbonnet on your team is massive to the point where like this is where you want to spend the rest of your fab if he's available. Tim Boyle, I have very little interest in. I'm, I'm, he'll probably get benched by next week. Jaden Reed, of course, needs to be super highly owned. Uh, he's just been pretty much the wide receiver one in Green Bay. They're starting to get him more involved in the passing game. They're starting to get him more involved in the running game. And he's an electric playmaker, so he's going to rack up yards if they continue to give him touches all over the place. He's also running about as many routes as anyone else on the team. As you can see, 69% of the snaps last week. That was close to where Christian Watson was. That was close to where Romeo Dobbs is because Dontavian Wicks is starting to play a bigger role in the offense too. So Jaden Reed is as valuable as any pass catcher in that offense right now. Odell's, I, I mean, let, let, let's look at the rest of the Baltimore situation because we, we talked about Isaiah Likely, right? Mark Andrews is out, which opens up 20, 25% of the targets in this offense. Zay Flowers will likely continue to see 8 to 10 targets a game. Odell's probably the other biggest beneficiary here outside of Isaiah Likely because Odell's starting to turn it on now. I think he's got two touchdowns in the previous two games, and then he went four for 116 in this most previous game. So he strung together three solid double-digit PPR games in three straight weeks, okay? So now this feels like the huge letdown game, but they play the Chargers, who obviously can be thrashed around uh, via the air. So you'd like to think without Andrews, Odell Beckham can kind of be played into your lineup right away. I still have hesitation. I mean, you look at the snap percentages, like he's getting it done, but 46%, 33%, 33%. And yes, you might want to say like, hey, they, they blew out the Bengals, so he didn't play that much after a huge game. I, I agree more so with that take probably than saying that he's a 35% snap guy and he will be he will be asked to do more now that Mark Andrews is out. So I think Odell Beckham is without a doubt worth an add on to your team, which is something I never thought I'd see myself saying uh, at any point in fantasy going forward. But I, I I would drop, you know, somewhere from five to eight percent. They still do have their buy next week. And we're not exactly sure this offense is going to look without Mark Andrews. So I'm not spending over the top. We did just see a huge game from Justin Watson last night on Monday Night Football. And by huge game, I mean five for 53 and a touchdown. But more importantly, coming off of the bye, we thought it was going to be Rashi Rice. We thought it was going to be his game. Disappointing because he wasn't the guy who got that post post bye rookie bump in the Andy Reid offense. It was actually Justin Watson, who is now fully healthy. 11 targets. That's got to be a fucking career high for this guy. They play Vegas. They play the Packers. They play Buffalo. They play Vegas again. And then Cincinnati. That has to be one of the softest playoff schedules in fantasy football going forward. Now, I'm not ready to start Justin Watson because you look at the rest of his games. Like, one game, probably the outlier here. But if he's going to be running 75 80% of the snaps, they did not update the snap counts yet, so I'm not actually sure what the percentage was. But he was out there for most of the game. And he could have had a bigger game. I think he had a drop in the beginning of the game. But definitely someone in deeper leagues if you need wide receiver help right now. A.J. Dillon, obviously, with Aaron Jones out. Greg Dortch is kind of interesting, but I feel like he only got on the field because Michael Wilson and um, who else? Someone else was was inactive, too. I can't think of his name. I apologize. I should have came more prepared for this. What the fuck is it? Who is who is Zach Pascal? And anytime you got to say like, oh, this guy only got on the field because Zach Pascal was hurt. Probably bad. Greg Dortch balls every time he's on the field. Greg Dortch is a playmaker every time he's on the field. Coaches hate using him for some reason. Every Arizona coach cannot stand this man for one reason or another. Uh, so I have very little faith that he's actually going to be a playmaker in the offense when either Zach Pascal or Mike Wilson are ready because those guys will play on the outside. It'll push Rondell Moore back into the slot, and then Greg Dortch will be... <laughs> Ty Johnson, a little bit interesting coming off of that coming off that big game against the Jets. Nothing on the ground, but he did catch three passes for 47 yards and a touchdown. I think the bigger takeaway here is that it felt like Joe Brady taking over offensive coordinator duties had a focus on getting the running backs the ball in space on passing downs. James Cook had a big passing day. Ty Johnson had a big passing day. Uh, so I could see that being a staple of their offense going forward. Like, they're taking shots to dig, sure. Davis hasn't done much. Shakir had the one big play. But all in all, I think they're going to start settling into the fact that, like, Josh Allen will accurately dump the ball off to a lot of their running backs. I don't know. Ty Johnson's not the guy for me, despite all that being said. Khalil Shakir clearly is the guy for me because he's on my team, and I actually started him last week. And shout out to me. I, uh, I, I question whether or not we're going to get consistency out of him, right? He is not a, like, super full-time player, but he's, he's playing a lot, and he's obviously attached to a very, very good – quarterback in Josh Allen but like more often like you look at the last game 3.4 like you're just as likely to get that type of game as you are the 15 or 20 point game though you could do worse at Philly you could throw the ball a little bit tough defense obviously they still have their bye but then KC Dallas 
Chargers is a nice week 16 matchup. I probably wouldn't spend more than like 5% of my fab on him. Rondo Moore, I'm good. He had one good catch. Tutu Atwell is kind of one of the more interesting players on this list that's still edible, I would say, because Tutu Atwell is someone who did really, really well while Cooper Cup was out. Now, Cooper Cup has a low ankle sprain, and I think there's a 50-50, if not a good chance that Cooper Cup actually plays on Sunday against Arizona, but there was a report that came out yesterday that Puka Nakua actually injured his shoulder in Sunday's game. But it was kind of like a one-off report, and I haven't seen much about it since. So we'll keep a really, really close eye on injury reports going forward. But I do think that this raises the chance that either Puka or Cooper Cup misses this game. Tutu Atwell will be an every-down player, or at least a very highly targeted player in this offense because he kind of already is an every-down player for the most part. But against Arizona, that's a really good matchup. So Tutu, I actually think if one of those guys misses, you'll be able to throw him into your lineup with reasonable comfortability, comfortability, Comfort? Yeah. I don't know why I'm adding like six extra letters onto that. So he, he's kind of a sneaky good pickup. Who else down here? Uh, everyone's super, super highly owned. Donald Parham, he's 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 okay, uh, given the fact that like Gerald Everett's out. I don't know how much longer he's going to be out for, but if he is, then I, I don't hate Parham, I guess. Let's flip over to the other side, though, because the trending tab, I think, just wraps up there. One other sneaky, sneaky, sneaky ad, I want to say, and shout out to John Daigle, uh, 4 for 4 for this one, and I have no idea if it's actually going to come to fruition or has any credence to it. Felt like more of like a vibe play that he was talking about, but he said to keep an eye out for super flexors, Malik Cunningham, right, because they benched Mac Jones, and they've been very, very... Uh, quiet about who the quarterback is going to be coming off of the bye. They have not announced anyone. Was it Mac? But the name Malik Cunningham did come up in conversation. So if he is the starter for the Patriots, he's been someone who's kind of been thrown around buzzword here and there. Uh, I think he's someone like literally, obviously you don't have to spend any money on him because nobody's thinking about him. And there's probably a much higher likelihood that he does not end up being the quarterback over like Bailey Zappi, whatever. But if he does randomly get like two or three starts and you're in leagues like me, like I had Deshaun Watson in a couple leagues, I had uh, you know, if you had Joe Burrow, if you had any of these QBs who are just absolute tank fucking jobs right now, you could do worse than Malik Cunningham if he does get the start and no one's going to grab him before tomorrow if there's not a report that comes out. But say he gets named the starter on like Friday or Saturday, you got him staged. On the flip side, let's see, you could drop Darrell Henderson because Kyron Williams will be back this week. I would still hold on to Rico Dowdle, Quentin Johnson. I'm, I'm, I'll hold on to him if I can. I will say I got a lot of waiver claims in this league going through, and I believe Quentin Johnson is on the dropping end of some of them. So just by this premise, I will be dropping him somewhere. Irwin droppable. Conklin always droppable. Tyler Boyd, I, I'd, I'd hold on to. Yeah, you know what? Guys that are above 50%, I'm not even going to talk about. I'd probably still hold on to KJ Osborne. He still ran 95% of the routes, and I still think there's a chance that like he's not relegated too far behind Jordan Addison when Justin Jefferson returns. Royce Freeman, droppable. Zach Moss, droppable, unfortunately. Although, if I'm a Taylor owner, I would probably hold on to him just because we know how good he's going to be if Taylor does get hurt for your fantasy playoffs. Michael Thomas, multi-week injury. Uh, fine dropping him at this point in the season. Like you, th Those spots are super, super valuable. I would definitely hold on to Foreman, definitely hold on to Taysom, definitely hold on to Keaton Mitchell, can absolutely drop Hill, can drop Leonard Fournette. Gabe Davis is someone that, like, you don't want to start unless you absolutely need to, but there aren't a ton of guys on the waiver wire that give you random weekly upside like he does. Like, you can pick up a fucking Trent Irwin to play over a Gabe Davis, but, like, those are the types of guys on the waiver wire where I would rather just take the chance of getting 20 points or three points during uh, tough stretch weeks, you know? Tajay still hold on to. Chuba, a little bit confusing right now what's going on in the Carolina backfield. They split the snaps now, him and Miles Sanders again, kind of like 50-50. And uh, I thought I heard something that Chuba got banged up, but I guess he did not. I'd still hold on to him. Latavius Murray, you could definitely drop. Kareem Hunt, nope, we're holding on to. Josh Rennie, you could definitely drop. Jacoby, we're holding on to. Everybody down here I would drop, except for Jonu Smith. Well, there you have it for Week 12, Waiver Wire, in the books, in the novels. We only got a handful of these left. We only got like five more of these left. I can count on one hand. you love to see it. We're ramping up. We're spending fab, spending whatever we have left. I have zero fab left in any fucking league at this point. I'm just shooting blanks everywhere and never getting the guys that I want. Sad. It's a sad economy we live in. Yeah, that's it. So if you enjoyed, hit this button. If you want our waiver wire rankings, which will be live by the time you see this, head over to bdge.co. Sign up to be a big dog member and enjoy them perks. Hang. Hey.